and represent I'm a businesswoman. Mm-hmm. I had a really clear job to do when yeah. I took over Bud Light. And it was this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like mm-hmm. we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's get started. My God, it's full of... Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, this is your host, Andy. I would hope you would give the uh, Clown World Chronicles Orchestra a round of applause for their breathtaking rendition of Also Sprach Zarathustra. Fucking Germans and their fucking language. Anyways, I promise they're going to get better at this. We don't have a big budget to pay these people. So, you know, hopefully they'll practice a little bit more and get better at playing this song. But uh, anyways, here we are coming to you from the uh, from the uh, bunker, which is my basement uh, broadcasting on a br- uh, on a sunny Saturday afternoon. There's a couple of things I wanted to go over today considering it's February and it's Black History Month. Uh, But I I was watching a video earlier today, and uh, I I just wanted to to bring this up because, um, well, basically, I was watching a, uh, a podcast of the Loaders Eaters video, and I've been thinking about this for a while, since the Bud Light thing happened. Uh, back last year, last spring, summer. Um, I remember the woman who uh, basically um, justified what she did with Dylan Mulvaney um, as her rationale being was, you know, that the brand was stagnating. And... um, I wanted to kind of talk about that a little bit because it's been on my mind. I know I it's been a long time ago that this happened, but I wanted to talk about it just to talk about the the how dishonest it was, the rationale behind the decision um, had nothing to do with what she said it had to do with. So bear with me here while I just replay the video. I'm a businesswoman. I had a really clear job to do when I took over Bud Light. And it was, this brand is in decline. It's been in decline for a really long time. And if we do not attract young drinkers to come and drink this brand, there will be no future for Bud Light. All right, so the rationale is the brand is in decline, right? So let's see how the brand is in decline. Bear with me here while I pull up the data. So as you can see here, Bud Light, this is going back to 2012, as you can see right here. 2012. Since 2012, Bud Light has been the leading brand, the leading best-selling domestic beer in America. Since 2012. I checked all the previous years, going from uh, 2023 until um, 2012, and Bud Light was at the top the, the entire time. So when she says it's stagnating, what does she mean by it's stagnating? Is it stagnating at the top? Well, when you're at the top, there's nowhere else you can go except the bottom, which your harebrained scheme uh, quickly did because it was surpassed surpassed by uh, Modelo, which isn't even on this list. Uh, These are domestic beers. 
Um, so I wouldn't be on this list. But uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, sh- basically, Bud Light was at the top. It was at the top for like 10 years. Uh, maybe further, going back further, it was at the top. Um, I didn't bother to pull up that info. So her, her rationale, her, the, the way she explained her reasoning was, well, you know, the brand is stagnant. Uh, you know, it's a frat brand and blah, blah, blah. Well, how could it be stagnant if it's the top, if it's at the very top, right? I mean, is it like in regards, is it stagnating in regards to how, you know, customers or consumers perceive the brand? Maybe it's stagnating in that regard. <coughs> Excuse me. But in terms of sales, it was at the very top. It could go nowhere but down. So... It just goes to show how these people think we're all stupid. The leftists think we're all idiots. And I'm going to play you another clip after this. This is why I wanted to do this little, this short one today. Because uh, leftists um, cannot compete, ideologically speaking. Um, they, it, all their... Um, all their arguments, all their justifications, their rationale, it's always, uh, it's, it's always a lie. That's why I always say leftists, all, the, all leftists do is lie. Because, um, I mean, you're, let me pull up another graph here. So, so this is the uh, info I pulled off of uh, the podcast of the Loader's Eater video. But as you can see, up until April 1st, when the Dylan Mulvaney stunt was pulled, they were at the very top. Uh, nobody was passive. And then they cratered. They cratered. They have not recovered since. Um, these figures have pretty much stayed the way they are. Um, I don't think there's been an increase. I don't think they've recovered their market share. And that brand is permanently damaged now. So, I mean, your rationale of, you know, it was a stagnating brand doesn't hold water. Um, I mean, let's continue on with the video that she's talking about. And you'll see what her true motivations are, because she kind of admits the true motivations afterwards. So I had this super clear mandate. It's like we need to evolve and elevate this incredibly iconic brand. And... My, what I brought to that was a belief in, okay, what is, what, is, what does evolve and elevate mean? It means inclusivity. It means shifting the tone. It means having a campaign that's truly inclusive and feels lighter and brighter and different and appeals to women and to men. Mm-hmm. And representation is at sort of the heart of evolution. You've got to see people who reflect you in the work. And we have this hangover. I mean... Bud Light had been kind of a brand of bratty, kind of out of touch humor, and it was really important that we have. So, just to be clear, um, you know, you need to see yourself represented in order to identify with a product, right? Like, what's going on here? What happened to this? Why did you do that? All right, stop it. My bad. All right. So getting back to what I was saying, she's saying that, you know, you need to be represented. You need to feel represented. You need to be able to see yourself. Like, well, that's not how these things work. First of all, from my understanding, trans people only drink transmission fluid. Is, if, is, that, is that what's happening? I, I, I might not fully understand the whole trans thing, but as, from my understanding, they drink transmission fluid. So they don't even drink beer. So there's that. And secondly, uh, being serious here, like there was no problem with your brand. You just wanted to insert a tranny into the conversation because it's the... It's the uh, it's the in thing to do. It's the trendy thing to do, and you kind of made up some bullshit to justify your, um, you know, your misguided, <laughs> your misguided direction. Because you're basically it blew up in your face, sister, and you lost your job over it. 
So, you know, it's not going to fly when they say, oh, it, it, uh, it was a stagnating brand. It wasn't stagnating. Well, yeah, it would, if you call being stuck at the top for over a decade stagnation, then, yeah, technically you could say it's stagnating. But anyways, uh, that's that's the that's the. Uh, the the theme du jour today because I wanna I wanna play something else that I saw over the week there something happened here in Toronto and uh, it's the same type of logical fallacy thinking that um, that leftists tend to engage in I don't know if it's I don't know if it's done intentionally I don't know if they're just too stupid to realize what they're saying or what the problem is but I wanted to to show you this other uh, example of leftist logical fallacy, so if you uh, if you would just uh, bear with me for a moment, I'll be right back. So now I want to talk about this uh, this incident that happened in Toronto. So uh, two basically um, uh, innocent people were shot. One man was killed. The other person was shot in the face and is suffering what the police are saying, life-altering uh, injuries. And I want to play the video for you and just talk about more of the glorious leftist insanity. Director. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you, Jessica. Toronto's, Toronto's police, chief police chief visited a North York neighborhood today following back-to-back -back shootings over the weekend. The seemingly random shootings leaving a 40-year-old father of four dead and a teenager with life-altering injuries. CTV's Beth McDonnell reports. Arriving in November from Ghana, 40-year-old Adu Boache had just begun his new life in Canada. He was shot and killed simply going about his day walking by a bus stop. Boache's Ghanaian community in the GTA is now organizing a vigil Saturday and raising money online to pay for his funeral. Who's going to fast forward Korea this? High school students are sending prayers for the 16-year-old boy shot in the face at another nearby bus stop the day before, with supports being offered at school. We had a meeting supporting each other. My friends could have been that person, and just, it's just terrible. So as you can see, the neighborhood's pretty much black. Today's about the community. Thank you. Toronto. I'm just gonna scrub through. I just want to get to this lady here. Prince, there are many issues needing to be addressed. It really is disheartening, but there are a lot of other issues attached to gun violence. There are tentacles attached to this. Community issues that are there: poverty, racism, marginalization. One. So, did you get that? Uh, it, it, the, the issue involved with the gun violence is not the miscreant who shot two people in the face for no reason, killing one. It's not the fact that, uh, you know, uh, this kind of culture uh, permeates the black community. No, it's racism's fault. It's marginalization's fault. It's, it's uh, poverty's fault that uh, uh, the suspect, who is black, uh, they didn't show his... Uh, his uh, image in this particular report, but they showed a picture of the of the suspect, and he is black. And and let's be honest here, usually it's mostly black people who commit these kinds of crimes. Um, yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's uh, poverty's fault. It's uh, racism's fault. It's not the community's fault for raising miscreants like this. It's not the community's fault uh, for. Um, oh, let's let's just see here. Bear with me. So whose fault is this? Is is this you know poverty's fault that this what, what you're seeing on screen here? You're seeing these fucking savages uh, have their kids cavort with guns and 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 flaunt cash around like they're like little two bit gangsters. Is, is that the white person's fault? Did did we force these savages to do this? Because these people, these these people are savages. They, this is not, this is not civilized behavior. This is this isn't some height of civilizational achievement. Uh, this is behaving like an animal. These people are animals. So white people are. This is the fault of white people. 
We forced them to, uh, uh, you know, poverty forced them to run around with, you know, flaunting money like this and guns to, with little fucking kids. Look at this kid here. He's like a fucking toddler. This is, this is, this is a fine, upstanding uh, behavior. This isn't the fault of poverty. This isn't the fault of marginalization or racism. These people are subhuman. They are subhuman. Normal, dignified human beings don't be- behave this way. And instead of calling this, this fuckery out, that, that, that cunt, because that's all she is. She's a fucking cunt. All she does is she provides cover for them. Oh, it's not your fault, you benevolent creature, you. No, it's the white man's fault that you were pushed to uh, parade your kids in front of a camera flashing guns and money. Yeah, it's a white man's fault, but the white man forced you to do this. It wasn't your fault that you're a fucking miscreant that should be fucking, you know, given the gas chamber for behaving like a fucking absolute animal. No, it's a white man's fault. Anyways, it's just a couple of examples of leftist, uh, you know, logical fallacy that it's just, it's it's permeates the world today. Like completely bonkers. Anyways, I'm gonna keep calling this shit out. I'm gonna keep making these videos. If you like them, great. Give us a like, share, subscribe. If not, go fuck yourself.